The forces of good and evil, struggle between good and evil, transgressions and forgiveness, revelations of Jesus Christ from 1884 to 1950. Evil, man in the service of evil. Thus saith the Lord. In this period, the influence of evil is greater than that of good. Therefore, the force which dominates humanity is that of evil, from which selfishness, deceit, lust, pride, pleasure in causing injury, destruction, and all low passions are derived. The illnesses which torment man originate from that moral imbalance. Men do not have the weapons to fight against those forces. They have been conquered and taken prisoner to the abyss of a life without spiritual light, without true happiness, without aspirations towards good. In this very moment, man believes himself to be at the peak of knowledge, and he does not realize that he dwells in the abyss. I who know your beginning and your future in eternity, have given mankind weapons to battle the forces of evil since the first era. But they have rejected them and preferred a battle of evil against evil, in which no one triumphs, for in the end all will be defeated. It is written that evil shall not prevail which means that, at the end of times, it shall be the good which triumphs. If you ask me what the weapons with which I endowed humanity are, the weapons to fight against the forces and influences of evil, I will tell you that they are prayer, perseverance in the law, faith in my word, and love for one another. Evil has grown among men, my people. Kindness, virtue, and love have been powerless against the invasion of evil, illness, plagues, pests, and calamities. All that is the foundation of the perverse, and it has contaminated the hearts of the good. It has weakened some and decimated the ranks of the faithful, because evil has exercised great power over humanity. I have allowed all this to happen, for the sake of the free will I endowed you with. For behind all the perversity, darkness, and obfuscation of men, there is a divine light, the conscience which is not lost and never shall be. There is an essence which is the spirit, and it keeps the kiss the Father gave it immaculate. This kiss is the divine seal with which I sent all my children onto the path of the struggle. And because of that mark, none of those spirits will be lost. The Struggle Between Good and Evil You too have been shocked by the violence of evil that men and women have manifested throughout the various periods of your human life. Your history books have gathered their names. In the book of your existence, in the book where God writes down all of your deeds, all your works, there too are their names, and you have been astonished that a spirit, a human heart, can shelter such a force for evil, and contain enough strength not to tremble before its own deeds, and that it can even silence the voice of its conscience, so as not to hear the reckoning call that God makes to all of his children through it. And how many times has the journey of such spirits on this planet been long and tedious? Those men who, due to their free will, have rebelled against my love and justice, I used and availed myself of their very disobedience to make them my servants. And thinking they were acting freely, all their thoughts, words and deeds were an instrument of my justice both in relation to themselves and to others. But when will this reign end? 
the father tells you. The kingdom of evil has never ruled mankind in the first place. For even in the times of greatest perversity, there have been those faithful to me, obedient to my teaching, and apostles to my law. But the struggle has existed since the beginning. Which of those two forces has been superior in the struggle up until now? The force of evil. That is why I had to materialize myself among you, to help revive your hope and faith in me, and to bring warmth to your hearts, saying, You are not alone on the path. I have never lied to you. You must not twist the principles I have placed within you. This is the path of goodness and love. Behold how my light has torn apart the mist of your world. It is true that I come to combat men, but only to wipe away all the evil that lives within their hearts. I shall place the light and the strength of my love in those who faithfully follow me, and these shall then say, let us seek the dragon that besets us, the beast that induces us to sin and offend the Lord. They shall seek it in the seas and in the desert, on the mountains and in the jungles, even in the invisible. But they shall not find it, for it lives in the hearts of men, the hearts of those who have created it in the first place. And therein it has grown until it has dominated the earth. When the glare of my sword of light wounds the hearts of each and every man, the strength that proceeds from evil will be weakened until it eventually expires. And then you shall say, Lord, with the divine strength of your mercy, I have defeated the dragon, that which I believed beset me from the invisible, never realizing that I carried it within my own heart. Once wisdom shines within all men, who will dare to twist good into evil? Who would trade the eternal for the ephemeral? Truly, I say to you, none would do this, because all will be strengthened in the divine wisdom. Sin is simply a result of ignorance and weakness. Temptations and Seductions Humanity cultivates many trees. The hunger and misery of men leads them to seek the tree's shade and fruits, which offer salvation, justice, or peace. Those trees are the doctrines of men, many times inspired by hatred, selfishness, ambition, and delusions of grandeur. Their fruits are of death, blood, destruction, and the defilement of what is most sacred in the life of men which is the freedom to believe, think, and speak. In other words, he is deprived of the freedom of the spirit. Such are the forces of darkness that arise to struggle against the light. I have told you, beloved Israel, that the time shall come when the false spokesmen arise to give the false Jesus access, and within their materialism they will deceive, saying that through them the Master speaks. False leaders, false prophets, and false soldiers will arise, and with their word and their materialistic ambitions, they will seek to dissuade you from the road of light and truth. Pray. Realize that this is the time in which my justice and my light have riled all forces of darkness. This is a difficult time, full of dangers, for even the beings that inhabit the darkness shall pass themselves off as beings of light among you, to tempt and confuse you. I give you my light, so that you may not deviate from the road and be deceived by those who abuse my name. The tempters are not only invisible beings. There are also those incarnated in men, speaking of lessons that feign to be of the light but are in contradiction to my doctrine. Do not listen to these. My kingdom is strong and powerful, and if I permitted another force to confront my power and might, namely that of evil, it is merely to demonstrate my own, so that you may behold and feel the strength of light and truth in the face of the imposter and the darkness. 
It is so you can see that the kingdom of darkness, obliquities, and temptations, while indeed possessing great power, is merely an instrument of mine, and I truly make use of it. If I test you, it is not to stop you on the path of development, because I do await your arrival in my kingdom. However, I wish you to arrive victorious after the battles, strong after the struggle, full of the light of spiritual experience after the long pilgrimage, and rife with merits of the Spirit, so that you may humbly raise your face and behold the Father as He approaches, to bestow upon you His divine kiss, a kiss that contains all the happiness and perfections for your spirit. Moral Transgressions Humanity Humanity, bumping against one another. I find you denying your iniquity and boasting about what you believe to be your greatness, all the while concealing your blemishes. But I tell you that the man who thinks himself praiseworthy in his apparent greatness is poor in spirit. And to those who, lacking virtues, slander others for their shortcomings and judging their faults, I must say, that they are hypocrites, and they are far away from justice and truth. Not only those who take the life of the body commit murder, but also those who destroy the heart with defamation. Those who kill the sentiments of the heart, faith and ideals, are assassins of the spirit. And how many of these go freely, without prison or chains? Do not be surprised that I speak to you in this way, for I see among you destroyed homes, because while neglecting your duties there, you have created new obligations outside of them, without considering the pain and abandonment of your own people. Look around you. How many homes have been destroyed? How many women have given into vice? And how many children go without a father? How could tenderness and love ever exist in those hearts? Do you not believe that he who has caused the death of the happiness of those people and has destroyed that which is sacred is a criminal? You have become so accustomed to evil that you even call the people who invent new weapons of death great because they have the ability to destroy millions of lives in an instant. You even call them scholars. What is your reasoning? One can only be great through the Spirit, and only he who walks on the road of truth is wise. The Impotence and Transience of Evil Human perversity has reached astronomical levels in your eyes and the power of evil exercised by men appears terrible to you. Nevertheless, I say to you that those things are feeble when compared to the power of my justice and divinity, which is the master of destiny, life, death, and of all creation. Only a being omnipotent like myself could contend with me. However, do you believe that if a god would emerge from me, he would be against me? Or rather, do you believe that he can emerge from nothing? Nothing can emerge from nothing. I am all, and I was never born. I am the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega of everything created. Can you imagine one of the beings created by me becoming my equal? All creatures have a limit. And to be God, it is necessary to not have any limits at all. He who has harbored those dreams of power and greatness has fallen into the darkness of his own arrogance. Truly, I say to you, that there is no power strong enough to oppose my love. My enemies and rivaling forces are pathetic and weak, and the weapons that have attempted to oppose truth and justice have always been fragile. The battle between the forces of evil and the divine justice appeared to be an everlasting one. But nevertheless, in comparison to eternity, 
the battle will seem like an instant. And the faults committed by your spirits during its time of imperfection will eventually become insignificant stains that will be erased forever by your virtues and my loving justice. The Power of Forgiveness Humanity, I ask all of you, as I take this people as your representatives, when will you inwardly elevate yourselves to love one another and forgive each other your offenses? When will there finally be peace on your planet? The forgiveness that springs forth from love is taught by my divine doctrine alone, and it possesses a powerful force for converting, regenerating, and transforming evil into good, and the sinner into a virtuous person. Learn to forgive, and you will see the beginning of peace in your world. Even if you must forgive one another a thousand times, so it shall be. Do you not realize that an opportune reconciliation saves you from partaking of the cup of bitterness? As long as you are human, remember me on the cross, forgiving, blessing, and healing my executioners, so that you, on your difficult life journey, may bless those who have offended you as well, and do everything good for those who have deeply wronged you. Whoever acts in this way shall be my disciple, and truly I say to you, his pain will always be brief, for I will make him feel my strength in the moments of his trials. Forgive one another, and in this you shall find relief for yourselves and for he who has offended you. Do not carry the weight of hatred or rancor within your spirit. Be of a pure heart, and you will have found the secret of peace, and will live as apostles of my truth. <laughs>